Okay, so I fly into Medellin, I go into my hotel room, and I call up the Connect. So as I talked about in a previous episode, my first day in Medellin, I was blindfolded and driven to the stash house of a lieutenant for the Medellin cartel. Who exactly is the Medellin cartel today? It's a group called La Oficina, the office, and it originated in the 1990s as a money collector for Pablo Escobar. Obviously, we know that the biggest trafficker in the world back in those days was Pablo Escobar and the Medellin cartel. A wing of that became later La Oficina, and the way that they functioned was as an armed wing of the Medellin cartel. So they would collect money, they would pull hits, they would settle disagreements among the different factions of the Medellin cartel. And if you go back and watch Narcos, Colombia, I think it was season one, they reference a man named Don Berna. Now, Don Berna was the founder of La Oficina, and after Escobar was killed and the Medellin cartel, as they knew it, imploded, La Oficina stepped in and became the main supplier and exporter of coke out of Medellin. And today they exist as a group of loosely affiliated clans or cartelitos within Medellin, and they run everything from cocaine to extortion to prostitution. They also function, as I said before, as an intermediary between feuding drug gangs. They are not the main exporter of coke to the rest of the world. That's Los Urabeños, which I'll go into later in this episode. And it's funny because even though they don't produce any cocaine in the city of Medellin, it's still a way station and a stopover point for all of the coke that's leaving the country to be exported. It's not the factory, it's the distribution hub. And that was who I was meeting with that day after getting blindfolded in one of those barrios in Medellin. I was meeting with a faction of La Oficina. And I told you how cheap the drugs were down there. He had wholesale pot kilos, they don't sell them in pounds down there, they use kilos, 1,000 grams of weed for 50 bucks, and kilos of blow wholesale for 2,000 to 2,500. The price went up and down by like the week. It's almost like the stock market. So that day I picked up five bricks of weed and one brick of cocaine. They put it in a big duffel bag. We shook hands. He said, come back anytime, a la orden, at your service. That's how they left everything. Even the drug traffickers were the best at customer service. To this day, unmatched anywhere else I've been. And I get into this special yellow taxi cab that brought me there. I put the blindfold back on and I'm escorted back to my hotel. And later I would find out that I was in a barrio, a barrio popular, like a slum area, sitting just above the neighborhood of Envigado. And Envigado is the headquarters for La Oficina and also the neighborhood that Pablo Escobar grew up in. Okay, so now here I am in Colombia all alone and I've got 6,000 grams of drugs I gotta get off. I don't give a shit about the weed. I could smoke it, I could give it away, I could throw it away, it didn't matter, it was so cheap. But how do I move the blow? How does one, a foreigner in Colombia, of all places, not connected to a cartel, doesn't have any hitman, has no protection, and my Spanish was not great at the time, I didn't feel comfortable trying to sell any kind of wholesale to locals who didn't speak English, I knew that I needed to improve my Spanish and I would down the line become fluent. But at this point, I was still uncomfortable trying to sell Coke to people in Medellin, from Medellin. How does he get off a full chicken, a full unit of cocaine? Well, I told you it was exploding with tourism. So I picked up and I got a hotel room right across the street from what's called Hostel Row. And it's in a neighborhood called El Poblado, which is the rich neighborhood. It's the where all the tourists stay. And there's like three or four blocks of nothing but backpacker hostel after backpacker hostel. And it's people from all over the world staying in these places, but mostly rich European countries. So you got people from Britain, Ireland, Scotland, Spain, Germany, France, and of course, Australians. We all know what animals those people are. They got vacuum noses and they come to Colombia and they're used to paying three, 400 bucks a gram for good Coke back home. And they get here and they're putting it up their nose for $20 a shot. 
they could sniff a half a kilo in a fucking weekend, those people. So remember, I bought the kilo of Coke for 2,000 bucks. That's 1,000 grams at $2 a gram. And I could sell it to these Europeans for about $18 a gram, American. And sometimes they would try to haggle with me and would say, oh, mate, I got, I got a bad connect. And I'm like, hey, if you wanna get blindfolded and driven into the slums of Medellin, be my guest. So I started going hostel to hostel, introducing myself and offering my services. And very quickly, I was the go-to guy for Coke in that little neighborhood. And it took about a week, but I moved that entire brick of Coke. And my profit was about 15 grand. And that was just my default at the time. You could drop me anywhere on earth and I would become the drug dealer's drug dealer. Hey guys, if you liked that video, make sure to check out the full episode right here and subscribe to the channel right here.